I'm just coming up 10 years, and at the moment I'm an all-rounder. There was nothing, just a little pile of dirt and a hole. Once you watch it grow, it's just incredible. But mostly just driving the shovels, operate the big gear, and also um, uh, train, do the training. I was getting ready to swap over to um, night shift. I was in the crib, having my crib, and it hit me then. And um, I tell you, it's not a nice thing. The shocking feeling is when the doctor actually comes and says you have had or are having a cardiac event. That's what they call it now. And you think to yourself, I'm going to die. We, we think we're tough, but we're not when we come to a heart attack, I assure you. And I'd actually had symptoms of the heart attack happening while I was on day shift. And it felt like I had a sore back. Well, that's the thing with a heart attack. No one can actually know, and that's a, the problem with the heart. It, it doesn't tell you the same thing for every person. That's something I learned later. And it's not until you get the reassurance from from the people around you, the doctors and the nurses and everything, which are just, I can't stress enough how good they are. That's when you start coming out. But you actually get very frightened. You think this is it, I'm, I'm leaving here. So that's, that's the worst feeling you can have. When you actually have the heart attack, you're, you're very confused. You don't understand what someone will be talking to you, you don't understand what they're even saying. Your body's shutting down. But because we've got medics here on site and all the bases were covered, I got a nice flight with the Royal Flying Doctors down to Perth and uh, yeah, so I'm still here today because of all that support. Well, usually if you've got enough smarts about you, you'll listen to what's just happened to you and then you'll go on and follow up from it. And I was lucky to have a, um, a uh, course run by the hospital, a six week course that rehabilitates you back into understanding what happened to you, what you've got to do about it what your future can be if you don't sort of you know you've, you've got to buckle up and you start changing your diet the way you think about doing things you know your stress levels everything it's, but mostly it comes down to our lifestyle people don't believe it because they see one side but I've actually had to um, incorporate the a diet strict diet system that I, I don't my sugar intake has to be dropped right down but sugar is like like an addiction, like every other addiction. If you, you just drop it out, you'll get very, your body don't like it. So you have to wean yourself off it. And I have been doing that for two years. Gender's the biggest problem we've got for males because we carry weight in it up in the upper part of our body, around our heart. Girls tend to carry it low. So gender, and the gender side of it's one of the reasons you have heart. There's only three that they quote. That's genetic, that you've been born with a heart condition, your gender, it's one of them and our lifestyle. You can feel healthy on the outside, but inside, until you actually have an angiogram, you don't know how the condition your heart is. They can have an EG, that's just your electrics. But the actual pipes inside, which is where food and, and, and drinking and smoking affects, um, it's probably building up on the most, and be going to the gym every night, until you know. So you really have to think about, at, at our age, getting checkups. Just because you feel good doesn't mean you are inside. The project we are doing at the moment is actually designed to find out if we can actually make men healthier. And what we are looking for is men between the ages of 50 to 70 carrying just a little bit more weight around the waist than he would like to be. And we are doing a study to see if we can make men healthier and make their blood vessels healthier as well. We want to prevent heart attacks and strokes, so that is ultimately our goal. And if we can do that, then that will translate into a lower risk of heart attacks or strokes. It's really important for the community to support medical research, and we are doing this study with the Heart Foundation grant. So yes, please support medical research, support the Heart Foundation, because then we can do the right research and see if we can make people healthy and see if we can actually prevent heart disease and strokes. But they're involved right up into the surgery side of it. Their research that they've done, the money that we've raised for people, or people raise for them, you hear of it in the hospitals, you hear of it. You know, this wouldn't have been done if it hadn't been for the, the Heart Foundation and, and the way they've put their effort to it. I'm all for it. Having been through it, I, I think couldn't be a better subject to try and promote. It's, it's a killer of a lot of us.